views and opinions reflected in any of the stories narrated are solely those of the story contributor and are not necessarily that of the Nightmare Society. This podcast features adult content, so listener discretion is highly advised. And if you or anyone you know is struggling, help is available. Please see the resources in the show notes. Hello again, Nightmare Society, and welcome to another episode of True Horror Stories. Don't forget if you're part of the online campfire, be sure to listen through your podcast app there as you have an extended episode. And if you're interested in hanging around the fire, you can stop by at patreon.com slash nightmare society. And for the rest of you, thank you so much for being here and sharing in mutual creep fascination. Now... Get comfy and prepare yourself for another episode of The Nightmare Society. Almost a year ago, I was an opener at a resort clocking in before 5 a.m. each day. The resort is located inside of an affluent neighborhood in a very well town suburb. The employees had to park in one of two parking lots at either ends of the property, and the lot I chose was adjacent to a long and windy road outside the resort, which led to the rest of the neighborhood. The road and resort were separated by a short range of brush and trees that no one ever walked through. I had arrived one morning per usual and put the car into park with my headlights on. The lights in the lot weren't ever on in the morning since no one else really showed up before 6am when the sun was out, so it was usually always dark at the start of my walk. Save for security, I was one of the first employees to arrive on the property each morning and was usually completely alone in this particular parking lot at this time. This morning didn't seem any different. I had my hand literally at my keys, my brain in the process to turn off my car, when I noticed a young girl, maybe like 14 or 15 years old, come scampering. Her body language was the exact definition, run with quick light steps, especially through fear or excitement. Through the span of trees that separates the resort from the outside road, She was directly in front of my car and my headlights illuminated a clear view of her in the pitch black. She looked like she was in high school, had long blonde hair and was wearing a jacket with pajamas, maybe, like she had just walked out of a house. One thing about her that bothered me was that she wouldn't stop laughing and smiling. I couldn't hear her laughing from outside the car, but she was visually giggling at something I wasn't aware of or could see, and it was so unnatural glanced behind her as if someone else were there waiting away from the headlights. She then waved at me like it were a normal gesture at this time and then immediately (laughs) ran to my passenger side door. This all happened in a matter of seconds and I wasn't really sure what was even happening besides my anxiety spiking. I know I simultaneously yanked the aux from my phone to shut whatever song had been playing off while grabbing for the lock button. I remember feeling panic for never remembering if it's up or down to lock when the girl began pulling violently and incessantly on the door handle on the passenger side. I realized because I hadn't turned my car off, it stayed locked, thankfully. She began pounding on the window, and I was screaming at the top of my lungs for her to leave before pressing my horn. I could see her laughing outside like this were some type of a game as if I were a silly friend not letting her in as a joke. After a few seconds, she stopped the pounding and trying to open my door. Her face fell flat like I disappointed her, and she started to walk away from my car back the way she came. She waved at me again before squeezing through the trees, out of the view of my headlights. This whole encounter confused me almost as much as it scared me. Most people I told the story to just chalked it up to her being on drugs, but that narrative hasn't felt right to me despite her behavior. 
Maybe she was just being an extremely out-of-touch teenager whose parents needed a firmer grip on her. My first thought was possibly human trafficking, but I'm not sure if that would fit the scenario as I'm not the most well-versed in the subject. I told someone when I made it to LP, but they didn't seem to care much. I didn't call the police, and I regret that. I'll never get that out of my brain, though, how freaking off the feeling was watching a stranger, seemingly alone, hop out from the trees in the darkness, laughing and then trying to violently enter your car in an empty parking lot. I do think the possibility of someone else being present the whole time is a lot more scary, and I wonder who else was there, and where exactly. been doing my one hour of outdoor exercise at night because I find it most relaxing. My neighborhood is very quiet and I'm lucky to live in such a nice area, which I've always considered super safe. I used to walk at night even before lockdown because I live right next to a canal, so there are a lot of nice paths that are super pretty at night when everything is all lit up by the moon. Anyway, I was walking last night and decided to go to the shop first because I was hungry then detour back to my usual route along the canal. When I was walking, I heard two guys speaking super loudly in German. I live in England, so it was a bit unusual, but not anything I thought twice about. They looked around 30, pretty tall, and they had caps on, which I remember because they had matching designs, which I thought was funny. They started getting really close, and when I glanced back to look at them, they started jeering so I knew they were looking at me, which kind of freaked me out. So I sped up, walking towards the shop, but had to stop at the road. I wasn't planning on getting hit by a car. They caught up with me, but didn't stop for the lights to change. Just walked across and went into the store I was headed for. So I shrugged off my hunger and decided to just go for the canal and have my walk. I stopped thinking about the men soon after, chalking it up to me being a generally anxious person. I don't particularly like walking past strangers at night, and I'm self-conscious enough as it is without them talking to or about me. Anyway, I complete my walk and I'm headed back home. For the story to make sense, I need to describe where I was stood. On my right, there is the water itself. I'm stood on the path, and to my left, there's a big drop that goes straight onto the main road. Next to that road, there's a row of houses. There's a big railway bridge in front of me. I have my earphones on and my music is pretty loud, but I think I hear someone shouting, so I take one earphone out and listen. But it's pretty silent apart from passing cars on the road below me. That's when I see the two men heading towards the bridge, and I immediately recognize them as the two guys who had jeered at me before from their caps. I stop walking as my anxiety floods back and consider phoning someone because I irrationally think if I am on the phone when they walk past me, they won't bother me. But despite the fact I've been stood frozen for ages, nobody comes out from under the bridge. I wait, staring at the bridge for a while in complete confusion because there's no way they could have just vanished. I can see through the other side of the bridge so I know they didn't turn around and walk away but they certainly hadn't walked through because no one passed me. After a few moments, I start to think I hallucinated them or something. I have no history of hallucinations, but I couldn't explain it any other way. So I started slowly walking towards the mouth of the bridge, and just as I'm about to step in, I see it. The shadow of one of the men cast across the wall. My blood literally ran cold as I realized what was going on, They were waiting for me at the other side of the bridge, but they must have hidden behind the abutment so I wouldn't see them. My mind went to a million different places, panicking about what they would do if I walked under that bridge. I was convinced they would just follow me. If I stayed where I was and phoned for help, I was certain they would come out to see what was going on and I would be trapped. I did the only thing I could do. 
I quietly ran to the fence that separated the canal path from the drop to the main road and climbed it. It was only about thigh high, and on the other side there was a small space before the wall and drop itself. I waited for a couple of moments as the cars passed, but thankfully I live in a quiet area, so the road was soon empty. I managed to navigate myself so I could lower myself off the drop without A. making much noise, or B. hurting myself too much, and the moment my feet hit the road I raced to the side where the houses were and sped walked down the path as fast as I could without making any noise, only glancing back when I was nearing the end of the road. The men were still there next to the bridge. I could see they were looking through the bridge to see where I had gone to. I felt sick and terrified, but I still made it home. I don't know what they wanted. I don't know who they were or if they will be there again tonight. But I do know I'm not going to be walking at night for a very long time. So, strangers under the bridge, let's not meet. and go to school with a uniform. I go to quite a large all-girls school with about eight classes of 30 per year, with five years and a six form attached. So I have heard about creeps lingering outside of the school before, but they're usually sorted out quite quickly by school staff, I guess. At the time, I was in year nine, so about 13 years old, and about four foot nine inches. I had a big homework assignment due, and because I didn't have a computer at home, I stayed late at school to do it in the ICT suite. As it was in the beginning of the school year, it was relatively dark at 5 p.m., which is when I got out of school and this event took place. I had to take the bus home as both of my parents were working. The bus stop outside of my school was fairly busy. There was a couple of other people and me. I had my back up against a fence and noticed a man leaning on it. I was aware of my surroundings as I have had previous experiences with old creeps, and I'm just a generally paranoid person. The man didn't strike me as particularly interesting, but I did notice him glance over at me from the corner of my eye. I then saw a bus and assumed it was mine, so I stepped forward to check. It was not my bus, which was annoying because I was cold and didn't have a coat. As I went to step back up against the fence, I almost stood back into the man that was under the bus stop originally, but he had moved directly behind me, with his arm up against the pole that's next to the bus stop telling you the buses that come to the bus stop. I felt a bit cornered in, but I couldn't move as the other side of me had all the people waiting to get on this bus that was coming. It felt like forever as I could feel this man's breath on the top of my head as I watched the bus come and collect all the other people at the bus stop, but it was probably only a minute and a half. Once the last person got on the bus, I quickly moved out of this man's area and back against the fence. He moved so he was back under the bus stop sitting across from me staring at the ground. At last, my bus came after about three minutes. I didn't want to give away the fact I was getting on this bus, but I had to wave it down so I stood next to the road to signal it over. As I got on, my heart was going really fast as the man was back behind me again. I had already gotten my bus card out and scanned it very quickly and only saw a few people downstairs. Normally there might be a few people upstairs. In this case, that's where I headed. That was probably my biggest success. Or mistake, I don't know to be honest. I got up there and it was completely empty. Great. Well, I couldn't really go back down at this point because I knew the man had already gotten on and would be coming up the stairs. So I did the next best thing. I sat in the outside seat directly in front of the bus's camera, which I kept looking directly at just in case something happened. The man came up the stairs as expected and he sat in the right back of the bus not before looking and smiling at me as he passed. It was then that I had the idea that probably saved me. I live on a quiet street and it was already dark now, 
so there was no way I was getting off of this bus at my stop with this man. I pulled out my phones and earbuds. I put one bud in my ear and texted my best friend to play along when I FaceTimed her and informed her of the situation. She understood and along with some small talk, talked loudly about how my mom was so mad that I had stayed late at school and she had texted me saying she was waiting at the door for me and I had told her that I was only 10 minutes away. In reality, I told my mom that I was staying late in the morning before I left for school and now my mom was at work, 45 minutes away. And so was my dad, about an hour and a half away, with limited access to either of their phones. I was at my stop to get off now and took a deep breath as I stood up. I looked back at the man and he was looking at me as I walked down the stairs. My friend was screen recording at this point just in case something went down. Thankfully, he didn't follow me down, but as I was walking away from the bus, looked back to see him up against the back window, hands and fists staring at me. That's when I took my flimsy school shoes off and sprinted to my house. As the next bus stop was still in eyesight, there were two on the main road that led down to my street. Once I was down my street and far enough away that you couldn't see the top of it anymore, I told my friend about him up against the window. She understood and I put my shoes back on and speed walked the rest of the way to my house. My family still doesn't know about this even though I was quite proud of myself on how I handled the situation and how I had run with no shoes on, in a heavy skirt, and a big rucksack on my back. I don't know they ever will know because as much as I don't want to ever stay late at school again, I know I probably will have to again at some point and I don't want my parents to feel guilty about not being able to help if something more serious was to happen while they were at work. So to the creepy man who doesn't know what personal space is or frankly doesn't care, I hope we never meet again. I'm a 23-year-old female, and this all started about a year ago. I live on the second floor of an apartment complex and have lived here my entire life. The building is mostly comprised of families with young children and married couples. A lot of the families have lived here as long as my family has, so everyone knows each other pretty well. There's only one apartment unit that isn't occupied by a family, but rather by a pair of brothers who keep to themselves. One day, one of their sons, around my age, appeared out of the blue. He was strange off the bat. He would always wear a sweatshirt with the hood up and would run through the apartment complex to get to his apartment. I'm not sure what his face looks like, but he always had the hood over his face. He lived on the first floor, on the back side of the complex, and would often get into his place by jumping through the window. He basically did everything in his power to avoid any interaction. I didn't mind him because I never saw him due to my busy schedule. However, one day he started sitting on top of the staircase that leads to my apartment. This was strange because his apartment unit was on the other side of the complex on the first floor. I brushed it off at first, but it started happening every day. When I would come home from school, he was there. When my boyfriend at the time would drop me off at night, typically around 10.30 to 11, he would be there. Sometimes when I would leave and come back hours later, he would still be in the exact same spot, as if he didn't move through the five plus hours I was gone. At this point, I told my parents and my boyfriend about it and they became very vigilant. My boyfriend would park his car and walk me to my door every night he dropped me off. Once he saw my boyfriend, he stopped sitting on the staircase and I thought it was over, but it wasn't. He started waiting for me at my bus stop. The bus I take home from school stops right across the street from my home, so it's a short walk. One day when I was getting off, I saw him waiting at the bus stop. Once he saw me get off, he followed me into the complex and sat on the staircase. He also started following me when I would walk my dog. At this point, my parents were upset. My mom started letting the neighbors know he was following me around. My neighbors started making sure he wasn't bothering me or if I was alone they would start a conversation with me until I got into my door. 
one day I got a friend request on Facebook from this guy. Mind you, he had never spoken a word to me, so how did he know my name, let alone find me on Facebook? My mom tried talking to his father, but they would never answer the door when my mom knocked on their door. So I'm thinking, it can't possibly get any worse, right? He seemed harmless, so I wasn't too worried. I was wrong. One day when I returned from my boyfriend's house, my mom told me she had something to tell me, but she didn't want me to get spooked. She proceeded to tell me that when she was walking towards the kitchen to get a glass of water, she saw something in the tree outside move. Our kitchen was a huge window that takes up most of the wall. In front of the window, there's a huge tree. If someone were to climb the tree, you could see into our apartment. Well, guess what? When my mom took a closer look, she realized my neighbor was sitting in the tree looking straight into our apartment. My mom called my dad over and when my neighbor saw my dad, he jumped off the tree. At that moment, I felt my peace stolen from me. We filed a police report, but when the police went looking for him, he was gone. It turned out there were snack wrappers and a blanket hidden in between the leaves of the trees. The police think it wasn't the first time he was up on the tree. I couldn't help but to wonder how many times he saw me walking around and I had no idea. It's been about six months and I haven't seen him since. His dad still lives in the complex, but there's no sight of him. The police haven't been able to find him, so I have no idea what happened to him, but I hope we never meet again. As always, thanks so much for listening, and until next time... Shoot, 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 shoot